An autoregressive model, or AR in short, is a time series model that regresses the dependent variable against one or more lagged values of itself. The equation of an AR model can look like this, where yt minus 1 is the value of the dependent variable in the previous observation. This means that we use in the past values of a variable to predict the current and future values of the variable. If the AR model only regresses on itself with a lag of one period, we call this a first-order autoregressive model, or AR1 model. In practice, an AR model can regress on itself with a lag of more than one period. If it has a lag of one and two periods, we call this a second-order autoregressive model, or an AR2 model. In general, an AR model of order P is expressed as such, where P indicates the number of lagged values that the autoregressive model will include as independent variables. In this course, we shall just concentrate and illustrate the concepts with AR1 models. Forecasting using an AR1 model is very much similar to what we've learnt for linear regression so far. We estimate the parameters for the intercept and coefficient using the ordinary least squares method and use the current observation as the input. Our output will be the forecast value of the dependent variable for the next period. This is known as a one-period-ahead forecast. A two-period-ahead forecast for the AR1 model will look like this, where we take the one-period-ahead forecast as the independent variable. Note that the hat symbol indicates that inputs are actually forecasts themselves with errors. This implies that multi-period forecasts are more uncertain than single-period forecasts as the errors accumulate over multiple periods. Let's practice. Ravi estimated an AR1 model to predict the inflation rate of Megaland using past quarterly inflation data from 2010 to 2015. If the inflation rate for this quarter is 3.6%, forecast the inflation rate for the next two quarters. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. First, we calculate the one quarter ahead forecast. We plug in the current inflation rate of 3.6% and we get a forecast of 3.38%. Next, we plug in this forecast to estimate for the following quarter. Plugging in 3.38% into the equation, we get 3.2%. Now, one common misunderstanding of AR models is that if we plot the dependent variable over time, we should expect a straight line with B0 as the intercept and the coefficient as the slope. This is totally wrong. Time is not the independent variable in this case. The independent variable is the dependent variable for the previous period. In fact, you may be surprised to learn that some AR1 models can imply that a time series has a tendency to center around a mean value. Recall from our last example, if the current inflation rate for this quarter is 3.6%, the forecast for the next is 3.38% and 3.2% after that. If we continue forecasting for many periods ahead, you'll find that the forecast converges to this level. In such a case, we say that the time series exhibits mean reversion and this level is called the mean reverting level. When the current value is above the mean reverting level, the forecast for future periods will be lower than the current. Conversely, when the current value is below the mean reverting level, the forecast for future periods will be higher. It's quite easy to derive the solution for the mean reverting level. If a time series is at its mean reverting level, the model predicts that the next value of the time series will be the same as its current value. That is, the dependent variable will be a function of itself. Solving the equation, we get a mean reverting level of B0 divided by 1 minus B1. So, back to our inflation rate example. Given the AR1 model, what is the mean reverting level suggested by this model? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. This should not trouble you much. Simply plug in the coefficients B0 and B1, we get a mean reverting level of 2.5%. At this point, we have to clarify that not all AR1 models have a mean reverting level. Those that do not are non-stationary 
and are known as a random walk, which we'll learn in the next lesson. Those that have a finite mean reverting level are covariant stationary. In particular, for an AR1 model, the magnitude of coefficient B1 must be less than 1.0. Besides having a finite mean reverting level, which means that the expected value of the series is constant and finite over time, covariant stationary time series also need to satisfy the condition that the volatility is fixed, meaning that the variance is constant and finite over time. Also, the covariance between values at any given lag is constant and finite. And these are the three important criteria for a time series to be termed covariant stationary. Determining covariant stationarity is important because it's required for ordinary least squares estimation of an AR model to be valid. Another important requirement for models using the ordinary least squares method to be valid is that the residual terms do not exhibit autocorrelation. We've learned in the last topic that serial correlation, also known as autocorrelation, is the phenomena where residuals are positively or negatively correlated. When the residuals are correlated, standard errors of coefficient are unreliable, so hypothesis tests on coefficients can result in unreliable conclusions. We've also learned the Durbin-Watson statistic to test for the presence of serial correlation. Unfortunately, the DW test is not appropriate for AR models. Rather, we can perform t-tests on the autocorrelations of the residuals at specified lengths of lag. For each specified lag interval, we estimate the autocorrelation, which is the level of correlation between the forecast errors from one period to the next. You should be given these figures in the exam. The t-statistic is the estimated autocorrelation divided by the standard error, and the standard error is 1 over square root big T, where big T is the number of samples. With T minus 2 degrees of freedom, we determine the two-tailed critical values and test each T statistic if they're significantly different from zero. If any of them is significantly different from zero, there is significant serial correlation in the model. For example, if the critical values at 5% level of significance are minus 2.12 and 2.12, Notice that the t-statistic for the four-period lag falls in the rejection region. This means that it's significantly different from zero. If the data is quarterly, it means there is significant correlation every four quarters, which is a sign of yearly seasonality in the data. We'll learn more about seasonality in a future lesson, but for now, know that we should reject the null hypothesis in this case, so we conclude there is autocorrelation in the time series. This means that the model estimated by the least squares method is invalid and should not be used. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prepnuggets, let us do the hard work for you.